the first big island that was Okinawa. The fleet was starting to attack the lower part of Okinawa. They had all the main ships, the battleships, cruisers and destroyers and the auxiliary personnel and ships. And we were all at that time well aware that the Japanese were using kamikaze airplanes, that is airplanes filled with explosives and have the pilots commit suicide by into other ships and uh, usually giving it severe damage without sinking them. Being aware that the fleet took by ship and another destroyer, the Evans equipped us with special radar and stationed us on picket duty about 50 or more miles north of the fleet where we could patrol back and forth and detect the Japanese planes coming down from Japan. One day, we detected over a hundred Japanese planes coming down. We immediately radioed the fleet to set up fighter planes to engage these kamikaze suicide planes. They attacked us as well. planes hit my ship. One hit the torpedo deck, that is the deck above, one, one deck above the one deck above the main deck and wiped it out. Second plane on the starboard side, went down through the deck, down through the engine room, down through the bottom of the hull, and blew up underneath, putting a big hole in the hull. After a while, it looked like the ship was going to sink. The order was given all hands a managed ship. Most of us did that. There were a number, however, of brave, brave sailors who stayed behind to fight the fires and tend to the wound as, as, as best they could. After I swam away, I sent a smaller ship out with cargo nets hanging over the side of the ship into the water where we could get a hold of these nets and climb up the nets to the deck of the ship. Which we did. After another bit of time, ship was not going to sink. So they ordered all hands who were able to reboard the ship, throw everything of any weight overboard to give us more freeboard. The only other 
That time, they sent an auxiliary ship out carrying a large mattress, just as you have on your boat, only this one was about 15 inches thick, probably 12, 15 feet wide, and probably 40 feet long. Divers were able to fasten lines off to this mattress on one end, pull it underneath the ship, set it in place right over the hole, run extra lines over it, and tighten up on the line that you have a, a, a large bandage put over the hole, making it some what seaworthy uh, and then they towed my ship into a harbor on the island that had already been conquered there we tied up to a able to put divers down and weld a big steel plate over the hole, making the boat seaworthy but not metal worthy. At that time they sent an ocean going tug from San Francisco to Japan to take my vessel in tow back to San Francisco. When the tug arrived, I was given, we were given an option. Either you could stay with the ship while it was towed back and make an investment in rate, or since you had a better ship, you're automatically given 30 day leave, which I took. Now, the rest of it I've heard from people returning from the ship. They tug past a very big hawser or line or rope to my ship probably four inches wide or maybe bigger. Uh, they fastened the tow line to the ship and we set out to go to San Francisco, but ran into part of a typhoon, same as a hurricane over here, big waves, lots of wind. And uh, so the ships, the tug and the destroyer were going up and down and eventually broke the tow line. They were able to fasten another tow line to my ship and the same thing happened, it broke. The tugboat and another ship. They said we we're going to pass you a fairly large line. We want you to disconnect your anchor and fasten this.
have my sip and a huge bag of anchor chain. The chain is so heavy that it just sags way down in the water. Now, when the ships get underway and it's, when the waves are going up and down, the chain is so heavy, you still have a bag in the center. Makes it possible to continue on with a kind of a shock absorber in between the two. And that's how the ship got back to San Francisco. And that's my story.